Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today you join me to take a look at the brand new Shelby GT500. It's just been unveiled at the Detroit Auto Show, the flagship top of the line version of the Ford Mustang. And it's a car that I would truly love to add to my collection. So let's take a first look at the new GT500, go over the details, the specs, the facts and figures, and hear the sound of the thunderous supercharged 5.2 litre V8. It makes an incredible noise, and also talk a bit more about how it might be possible to get one here in the UK. It's not officially available for our market, but I would love to add one to the garage alongside the Ford GT and the two Ford Focus RSs. So Let's get started and take a look at the new Shelby GT500. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I'm a big fan of Ford Performance and what they're getting up to at the moment, especially since taking delivery of my new Ford GT. But this latest incarnation of the Mustang carries the headline that it's the most powerful street legal Ford ever produced with over 700 horsepower. To put that into perspective, the Shelby GT500 has more power than the Ford GT, a thoroughbred supercar that has 647, and that 700 horsepower figure isn't actually yet final. We'll hear more about the final output in the future, but they've alluded to what it might be through some teasers that we'll touch on later in this video. I'll also go over more of the stats and details, but for now, just take this thing in. The GT500 slots in at the top of the Mustang range, above the GT350, and the GT350R which is still on sale but the GT500 has this 5.2 litre supercharged V8 and if you look at it it is mean, it's aggressive, it's set for purpose and it's clearly going to be at home on the racetrack. It takes some of the features that were introduced for the Mustang GT4, the full race car. For example, as you can see it with the carbon track pack installed, you get the GT4 style rear wing in carbon fiber. You also have some incredibly aggressive looks at the front, which also aid with cooling. There's a lot more openings for additional airflow. In fact, 50% more openings than the GT350. The big aero continues all the way around, around the lower splitter, around the intakes, around the side skirts, and with the carbon pack you also get the carbon fiber wheels, the 20 inch carbon wheels with Michelin Sport Cup 2 tires. On the hood, or the bonnet as we would say in Europe, you'll spot the very very large vent. It's a six square foot vent which also has a rain tray underneath to stop water going through to the engine but this is all again for cooling and you'll also spot at the front of the bonnet you have the hood pins as well. The car is basically going to be at home on the drag strip, also on the track. It has Magna Ride suspension. It uses learnings that came from the Ford GT as well. Of course, the latest project really set about making the best supercar possible and now using some of that into the Mustang too. To talk more about the engine, it's the 5.2 litre supercharged V8. It's a 2.65 litre Eaton supercharger. The supercharger has a larger capacity than, say, my Focus RS at 2.3 litres. 2.65 litres for the supercharger. That is huge, and it makes such an epic whine. So let's take a little listen to this car for a moment and how good the GT500 sounds. does that sound, combining the grumble of the V8 with the whine of the supercharger. But one thing that stands out to me about the GT500 is the choice for the gearbox. I'm sure a lot of diehards will be shouting out for it to have a manual like you could have in the GT350 or the GT350R, but in the case of the GT500, they haven't gone with a normal automatic, they've introduced a new 7-speed DCT, a dual clutch transmission. So like in the Ford GT, you've got 7 gears, controlled through a toggle in the centre console, a rotary 
toggle to go between park, reverse, neutral and drive. And this is basically about faster shift times. The DCT will go between gears in under 100 milliseconds. It will also help with features like launch control and of course it's a bit quicker on the racetrack. So I see this a bit like Porsche going with PDK only in the GT3 RS as opposed to having a PDK or manual option in the GT3 because the GT500 is really at the top of the line. Now the numbers that have been given so far are a 0 to 60 miles per hour time or just under 100 kilometers per hour in the mid three seconds. Now I'm hoping it might be a little bit quicker than that. Of course it's rear wheel drive which doesn't help especially with as much power as this car might have. And they've also quoted a quarter mile time in under 11 seconds. Now that's not as quick as I thought it might be. I hoped it would be nearer to 10 but we'll see what the final production car will do when it's ready to be announced in due course. In terms of the interior of the GT500, if you have the carbon track pack, you can actually have a rear seat delete. So unlike having the back seats in a normal Mustang, you can turn it into a two seat coupe, lighter weight of course, by not having the seats back there. You've also up front got the Recaro seats, finished in leather, and you have the digital dashboard display as I recently experienced in Benzene Benz Mustang, which is one of the 5 litre Mustang GTs. You have the digital display that allows you when you go through the different driving modes, and you have six different modes in the GT500, to have at the very top a horizontal digital display of the rev counter, which means you don't have to look very far away from your eye line to see what's going on. Of course, at home on the racetrack, if you choose to be shifting up manually with the paddles on the back of the steering wheel. So this car is very much about the track. In fact, you can manually adjust various parts of the suspension. You can also see just looking at it that by having things like the carbon fiber wheels, that's about reducing your unsprung mass, keeping the car as lightweight and nimble as it can possibly be. And this car, they're really pitching that will be at home when it's on a racetrack environment so I hope fingers crossed that I get to experience what that's like at some point in the future. There are a few more things to talk about with the new car including some thoughts from the teasers as to what that final horsepower figure might be but before we do how cool would it be to have a GT500 here in the UK? It would be a complete unicorn. Now, in terms of my garage, of course, as I said, I'm a big fan of Ford Performance. I think it's a very exciting time in terms of the products that they're releasing. I was lucky enough to get one of the Ford GTs, only a handful or two of them here in the UK. And it's also joined in my permanent collection, we could say, with the Heritage Edition Focus RS, one of just 50. And again, a very special car with a lot of history as to the reasoning for its existence. I also have my Red Edition, my project car that is currently undergoing a lot of work, but I'd love to add the pinnacle of Mustangs to that as well, the current generation in the form of the GT500. To do that though, let's talk a little bit about how you'd have to actually go about getting one of those and then getting it here. Because even in the very few markets that it will be available, let's talk about the USA for example, and there's no pricing at this stage, so it's all a little bit of guesswork, but on the basis that the GT350R was $63,000 MSRP, the GT500 is going to be, with the carbon track pack and all the other options, I guess at least 75,000, if not a bit more, but let's just go with that figure for the moment. You have to actually secure an allocation. There's usually a price to pay on top of the MSRP to actually get and be able to order and spec the car. Then to bring it over to the UK, you need to transport it either by ship or air freight it at great expense. Then when it gets here, it needs to be converted so the headlights adapted for driving on the other side of the road. It has to be registered. And there's the small matter of 10% duty and 20% VAT. That's gonna take the price up to, well, certainly in excess of 100,000 pounds for a Ford Mustang, which is a lot of money when you consider that a base entry level car, I think in the US starts in the $20,000, it's not exactly the most expensive car in the world, and this is multiple times the price of the entry-level model, but it's a very, very angry, very cool-looking car, and the fact that you can't actually get them officially here makes me want one even more. So I'm gonna be doing my best to see if that's possible. Of course, at this stage, I can't really say anything on that front because who knows, but we will find out in due course, and I will be trying, because I'd love to share more with the GT500 here on the channel. A few other things, like I said, I would touch on. So in terms of the rear wing, you can pivot its angle. So you can have it at a steeper angle if you'd like more downforce, or you can reduce the angle if you would like to increase the top speed and have less drag. 
In terms of the wheels, if you don't order the carbon track pack, you'd have the normal forged 20 inch wheels, and those would come with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres, as opposed to the Pilot Sport Cup 2s that you get on the carbon wheels. So slightly different configurations depending on usage, but for me, you really have to have this car with the carbon pack to get that rear wing, to get the carbon wheels, and to really give it the purpose that it's built for. And using those GT4 and Ford GT learnings, this is a car that should in theory be quite dynamic when you want to go out and drive it on the track. And you know what? I think we should just have another quick listen because it is such a savage animal. But what I didn't yet touch on is what is going to be the power output. Now Ford so far have just told us over 700 horsepower, but back when the Mustang launched, they pulled a little trick. They did a teaser of the dashboard, which showed on the left hand side the gear indicator, fourth gear, and on the right hand side the current speed, 55 miles per hour. 4, 55, 5, 455 ended up being the brake horsepower. For the new car, they've shown a teaser that has 7th gear selected, 700, that would make sense, and on the right hand side you have 72. Is the power output going to be 772 brake horsepower? That would be about 781 PS? That's a big number, nearly 800 horsepower. That might be wishful thinking, we'll have to wait and see what numbers they actually manage to produce. But I think this thing looks incredible. I loved the Mustang when I joined Benzene Ben to go out in his car. I hadn't really had my eyes open to the new facelift generation from 2018. I drove one when it launched in Europe a couple of years ago, the new, well the first time the Mustang had gone on sale here in Europe. But the new one just adds even more. The looks, the general updates, the headlights, the interior, Area, the technology, the functionality it offers, and the GT500, in my eyes, is super, super cool. So hopefully, that beast can arrive here in the UK at some point. In any case, like I said, I will let you know, but there will be some very lucky owners of a very special car and a lovely addition to the Ford Performance lineup, with a lot of history too, going back, way back, to the 1960s and the first GT500 introduced in 67 based on the engine of the then winning race cars from Shelby. In any case, thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this first look at the new Shelby GT500 and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.